Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics and statics. We'll be talking about something called the dot product of two vectors, which is something that we'll be using constantly throughout this course. Uh, and in fact, everybody watching this, I assume, has already had some exposure to the dot product of vectors. Uh, you probably have seen it in a calculus course at some point, uh, and you almost certainly have seen it in a physics course that you may have taken in the past. So a lot of this, what we're going to be talking about here, is probably going to be a little bit of a review. But unless you're using vectors all the time, and unless you're calculating dot products all the time, it may have been a couple of years since you've seen this. So we're going to cover the dot product and kind of uh, aligned in, in the way that we're going to use it in the statics course. All right. Um, basically, we have talked quite a bit about vectors up until this point. Mostly, we have been adding vectors together, finding resultants. You know, we have two vectors, and they're pointing in different directions. You know, and they're attached maybe in the two tails or something. We want to find the resultant, and we've done graphical methods to add those. We've also done algebraic. We taught taught you that if you can uh, find the components, the Cartesian components x, y, z of uh, vector a and find the x, y, z components of vector b, right? then you just add the components. You get a new vector with some components x, y, and z that are the sum of the components of those other vectors. So we've been adding vectors a lot. It's incredibly useful. But you might start to ask yourself, when do we ever have a need to multiply two vectors together? When, we, when would we ever have the need to actually multiply two vectors together? It turns out there's lots of really good reasons to multiply vectors. Uh, but it also turns out that there's actually two different ways to multiply vectors, and whatever method you're using really just depends on what you're doing, what type of problem you're solving. Because physically, sometimes you'll multiply using the dot product of two vectors, and sometimes you'll multiply using what we call the cross product of two vectors, which we will also cover a little bit later. So let's just kind of jump into it here. There are two ways uh, to multiply vectors. So there are two ways to multiply vectors. And I've already hinted what they are, and I know that you already know what they are, but we're going to, to write it down anyway. There's a first way, which we call the dot product, which we're going to be learning about here. Uh, and also, later on, much later on, we'll talk about something called the cross product. So I'll just write it here. We're not going to talk about the cross product yet, um, but I'm listing it here because the, the giant big picture here is that there's two fundamental ways to uh, calculate when you multiply two vectors together, what you get. Now you might say, well, when do I use this? When do I use this? Or what is the difference between this and this? Well, the main difference here is when you do the dot product of two vectors, the result is a scalar. In other words, when you dot two vectors together, you just get a number. So in this class, in this lesson, we'll be dotting vectors together. Actually, in the next lesson, we'll actually do some practical examples. Here we'll be doing the theory. Uh, but when you dot two vectors together, you just get a number back. All right. In fact, sometimes the, the uh, dot product is actually called the scalar product. Sometimes in some books, you might see it written as a scalar product. That's because when you dot two vectors together, you get a number, which is a scalar. So I might have vector A and vector B and dot them together, and I might just get two. That might be my answer. I might dot this other vec this vector with this uh, other vector, and I might get six. Or I might dot a vector A and vector B. I might get 49. But I'm never ever going to get a vector back when I dot two vectors together. Okay. Now, just for comparison purposes, I'll write down here uh, when you cross two vectors, which we will talk about later, um, the result is a vector another vector. So that's the main difference between this, these guys. When I dot two vectors together, I just get a number back. Four, six, eight, something like that. If I cross two products, I actually get